any subconscious artificial systems. So my question is, because you mentioned this in your book, whether uh, it is possible to evolve uh, computer systems uh, that have consciousness? Yes, it is possible for a computer to become conscious. Basically, we are that. We are data, computation, memory, you know, so we are kind of conscious computers in, in a sense, our, if you look at our uh, consciousness that way. But you don't design consciousness into a computer. See, that's not what it takes. It's not that you design a computer that acts like a person. What you do is you give it a, you, you produce an environment that has enough flexibility that it can be self-changing, that it has a purpose, you know, and it modifies itself, same thing, you know, that we have. If you can produce that, if you can give it that kind of flexibility, it will start to evolve. It will start to change to meet its purpose. You know, if its purpose is to lower entropy, then, you know, it would be more, you know, more like us, but its purpose may be something else. So whatever purpose you can design the, the purpose into it, but you'll see that it'll change itself to get to its purpose because that's, you know, that's the way it is. It can, it can modify itself based on its experience. Its experience is its input. So now you'd have to have a computer that had a rich array of input. You know, it wouldn't do just to have one input, right? It couldn't do much of that. It has to have a rich array of input. It has to interact with its environment. That interaction would have to be processed so it could tell whether that interaction was helping it meet its purpose or hindering it. Then it would have to go change things, the way it interpreted events, the way it saw things so that it would lower its entropy, so that it could more effectively meet its purpose. And you would see that that machine then would exhibit consciousness. Now, it may be consciousness like a bumblebee is conscious. You know, it wouldn't necessarily be human. It could be conscious like a clam is conscious. We already have some machines that are conscious like insects are conscious. There's some at MIT that, uh, they that walk around like insects, you know, and they approach barriers just the way insects do. They get to a barrier and first one leg goes up and then, this, you know, and you can see bugs do exactly the same thing when they get to that barrier. So that's a very simple consciousness. It's just a couple of processors on each of the joints that, that uh, have certain algorithms. It's very simple. Well, then, uh, you know, a bug's consciousness is very simple. So we already are, are seeing consciousness at that lower level. The idea when people say, well, conscious computer, you know, they want one that, that thinks like a person. That's a harder thing to do because you need to have a, an input, a variety of input that can be used and assessed, sort of like a person. You have to have the purpose, sort of like a person. You know, if, if you have all the aspects of this computer that are sort of like a person, then you'll get a, you'll get a consciousness that's sort of like a person. But that's a little harder thing to do. We need a lot faster computers with a lot more variety in their input and with a lot more, you know, it has to be fuzzy, uh, fuzzy choices. You can't have it all deterministic. So yes, computers can be conscious, but it takes a certain platform that has to be put together that will support that consciousness. And it'll only support as much consciousness as that, you know, as that system provides. So if you can provide the same kind of, kind of uh, platform that we have, you'll get something similar to us. That will be hard. So I would suspect that the first consciousness that we recognize as consciousness would be kind of a lower order consciousness because it's hard to make a computer that, that fast, that much memory. You know, well, it may be in another 20, 30, 40, 50 years. They may be that fast, that much memory, and they may be able to do fuzzy logic to the point that they actually make decisions. You know, they make their own decisions. They're not just following algorithms, you know what I mean? But they make, they make decisions based on their input and then change themselves accordingly, and that is basically the definition of consciousness.